let's go. I think we're live. And this is going to be a pretty chill out stream. I'm not anticipating anything too crazy. I'm kind of excited just to see how many of you guys just tune in randomly. Uh, because it's always pretty fun just to see people wandering in. And also, I kind of need some advice. And the advice I need is I want to publish a library uh, during this stream. I've got about two hours, but I don't want to do it speedrun style. Where I'm going to delete all of it at the end. I just want to really chat a little bit about this library and about what it's up to. So if you're in the chat, say hello. I'm just going to do some admin just to advertise that, yes, I am streaming. And, oh, hey, hey, hey. How do you pronounce your first name? Because I don't have a hope in hell because I don't read Cyrillic. Oh, hello. You guys are all coming. Thanks for coming for this impromptu little stream. Uh, let me kind of vaguely show you what I'm doing. I'm just doing a little bit of sort of admin stuff. Let me bung this up here. I need to tweet about this. But while we're doing this, well, hello, shush, shush me. Uh, while we're doing this, feel free to ask me anything. We're going to be building a library today. And I know I didn't sort of like schedule this thing up a, like ahead of time or anything like that. This is just like just rolling along. And you guys have just caught me at the start. Hey, Naman. Hey, James. Hey, Gordon. Hey, Patrice. I see all your comments. You guys are looking good. Uh, right. Hang on. Let me close my DM so you can't see who I'm talking to. Going live for a chill stream. Wallaby JS. Yeah. It's going good. Going really good, thanks. Um, Friday. Like the keys for the weekend. I'm about to turn the key for the weekend, open that gate, and I'll be there into the weekend for some good Premier League football tomorrow. That's what I'm looking for. Wallaby JS. I'll look at that in a second. Publishing a library to make testing in TypeScript easier. Oh, thank you, Nikita. I appreciate it. So, Wallaby JS, why are you not working at Microsoft? I've never been offered a job at Microsoft. I've never applied for a job at Microsoft. I'm not even sure that uh, Microsoft even has any availability for a developer advocate or anything like that. Yeah, I'm not going to delete the repo this time. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to. Hey, Juiced, Gafgon, James, weirdest bug I've had to fix. I'll tell you a little story, actually. Why not? Let's start with a story, which is... Um, when I was a junior developer, mm, no, I'm not going to tell this story. I'm not going to tell this story. It's kind of too, it's, a, it's to bring the mood down uh, at the start of the stream. That's like the most um, consequential bug I ever made, uh, which is definitely a story for a different time. Um, what is Wallaby JS? I'm kind of curious now. Just while folks are streaming in, Wallaby JS. Runs your tests immediately as you type. Yeah, I've used a few of these. I'm not kind of entirely sure about this stuff. Um, because I've used like the vtest one, the jest one, they never quite work as well as I want them to. If Wallaby is good, then it's good. So is this related to Quokka? Not Quokka. Quokka are the people that make the fancy taps. IT companies still hire people? Yeah, I mean, for, I I don't know the job market that well, but I assume they're, they're still hiring. My thoughts on monorepos are they're great. I love monorepos. I used to be the um, developer advocate for TurboRepo, which is an amazing monorepo tool, which solves a lot of the problems that traditionally you have with monorepos. And it makes like scheduling work very, very easy, makes um, caching work very, very easy. It's pretty badass. Wow, there's loads of people in here. Hey, Marcel. Marcel, Marcel. Marcel's my centered buddy. We both use centered. What parts of testing are we solving? Vtest and Cypress. Yeah, um, we're, test we're solving a very like specific annoyance I have with certain tests in TypeScript. And I'll get to that in a minute. Let's make it better by using Rust. <laughs> Come on, we got to compile to JavaScript. We can't use Rust. Really, what will it be for four years? Okay, maybe I should check it out. Maybe I should check it out. I'm not building that many kind of like uh, unit testy sort of facing apps that much. We're doing a quick AMA before we actually ship something because the plan is to ship something. This is not going to be an exciting stream, guys. It's going to be a chill stream. It's going to be a real chill stream. I'm going to have like good focused energy. This might be like a good co-working stream. I'm not going to be putting scarves on my head or, I don't know, dressing up fancy. Laughs and wasn't, yeah. 
Can you do dependency injection in TypeScript? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, TypeScript doesn't, like, whatever you can do in JavaScript, you can do in TypeScript. Striker.js. Never heard of Striker.js. What the hell is Striker.js? Keep pressing the wrong button. My face keeps disappearing. Striker.js. Um, mutation testing for JavaScript. What does this do? Um, I really hate this stuff where they don't actually tell you what it does in the first line. I sort of immediately start losing faith. Mutation. What? Okay. Strike a mutator. Test your tests with mutation testing. Hello. Shp. Uh, TS Toolbar is great. I actually use it in um, Total TypeScript. I, I use some of the things in t in TS Tool Belt. It's pretty good. Yeah, you'll have access to it later. Object or keys, generic type. Yeah, let me just bash one out. Um, work on creating a deep copy and trying to make it type safe. I guess what you're doing, like a structured clone thing. Const object, but that's different from object keys. Let me see if I can do this. Ooh, can I do this with my eyes closed? I don't know, that's kind of tempting. Okay, so hang on, where does the carrot move? The carrot moves like that, okay. So I would be, I'm at the end of const, now I'm at the end of object or keys, now I'm at the end of the equals, I open close angle brackets, I add a T inside there. Now I go back to the start. Now I'm at the const, now I'm at object keys, God, this is more challenging than I realized. Now, the question is, when I outright, do I go to the end of the angle brackets or do I go inside the angle brackets? Uh, okay, I go inside the angle brackets. Sorry, I, I snuck there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Damn it. Uh, I failed. I failed. I was getting close, though. So T is T, and then T extends objects, and then return object.keys. Uh, t as array key of t. Nope, wrong one. And then we can go const uh, result equals object keys a1, b2, c3. And result is going to be typed as a or b or c. Hope that helps. Uh, static section of the test. Yeah, does, TypeScript does take over a bit. If you want to do it faithfully. <laughs> <laughs> you like the courthouse theme. I kind of like the courthouse theme too. Um, it was fun. Fun while it lasted. Uh, I'm not sure. I like, it's just a lot of talking for me, you know. Like, demands a lot of energy. Joao. Joao. I remember from last time. All right. No. Um, no, you can't, you can't in by default in TypeScript, create an object from a type or create something from a type. You can create types from values, but you can't create values from types. Uh, the way you create types from values is you use the type of key. Annotate uh, an object in JavaScript without, annotate an object. How do you mean annotate an object? What do you mean by that? All right, um, I'm just gonna check my Twitter notifications. Why am I at 20 already? That's disgusting. Um, okay, hello. All right, let's actually look at what we're doing today. So, um, what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, I could go full in on the courthouse theme, but I need to get the wig and stuff. So, um, what we're doing. Oh yeah, TS mocks. What do I call this? Test utils? Yeah, test utils. <laughs> using TypeScript code in production without transpiling it back to JavaScript? You mean what, like using ES build or something? In theory, that should be fine. I don't see why that shouldn't be fine, but you've got to transpile it to JavaScript at some point. Okay, let me uh, stick this repo up so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Uh, publish to GitHub. Thing, thing, thing. Static type tests. Do you mean like um, just testing my types? Yeah, I do. In TS Reset, I use those. Um, so I've just created a repo called Test Utils. Go to start your own repo, of course. Um, 
the repo here is basically the thing that uh, I was tweeting about this morning, if you guys saw that, if you're on Twitter. Um, what I was kind of talking about was I want to solve some problems when working with mock data in TypeScript. Let me bump this up so you can actually see it. Um, God, I hate that it just shows my DMs by default. That's crap. The, the thing I want to solve is when you have like a complex piece of data that you're testing against, I want to, like the thing in TypeScript that you usually have to do is you usually have to say like, um, in fact, let me sort of mock this out a little bit. Let's say create a playground here. Playground.ts. Um, and inside here, let's say we got a uh, type user. And let me uh, do a little bit of quality of life just so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, you know what? Let's actually just go full toggle. So type user equals, um, let's say it's got an ID of string, um, name string. And let's say it's got, uh, these are coming from a database, so there's like some reports, I don't know, like a financial user or something. And then we got a func, const func equals, uh, takes in a user, and the user is a type user. So when I test this now, let's say I grab it from vtest and I say it should work. Um, what I need to do is I need to pass basically the entire thing into my uh, function here in order to test it. I need to mock out just a huge, great big thing. And I could use like a mock library for this if I want to, but most of the time, sometimes you just want to pass in like little bits and you want to just make it work, right? Just make it work. But you need to do this sort of as stuff here, which is kind of really annoying. Um, Zico from Nigeria, nice to see you. No, any type allowed in TS? No, I mean, you'd need an any type in TS, but you probably shouldn't be putting them in your application code. Never know where to use testing. Ooh, that is a good one. Native typing system in JavaScript. I think JavaScript will allow native typing systems, um, but I don't think it will have its own one. Um, oh, thanks. Playing around with Zod. That's fun. Um, no, I think... Um, uh, is there any possibility of creating a new language that would run directly, not transpiling to JavaScript? I think TypeScript will always compile to JavaScript. I don't think using TypeScript as like the base for the web is a sensible idea, really. I think um, like so many apps uh, are built in JavaScript and they run on the web and that's the language of the web. So JavaScript is gonna, is gonna win out. Mm. Yeah, this is the issue. Like in TypeScript, you kind of want to be a little bit less strict. So I want to build some mock utilities, some test utilities to decrease the strictness, to let you be less strict. And this is what I've done. So if I can, I should be able to just import something like this. I should be able to import a little function called partial or from partial. And from partial comes from this library that I've created. And what it does is it takes in, like it looks at the function that or looks at the type that you want to get back and then just lets you pass in a partial of that type. And it's a deep partial too. So reports inside here, you've got ID, blah, 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 name inside there. Um, I think you can even pass undefined to this array member, which might not be the best idea, but that's how it works now. Um, and so it lets you do this. You can do like from um, any as well. So you can actually do this where you just pass in anything you want to. But, and because sometimes you do actually need to test this stuff. And so, this one is like a little bit, you can't do this with from partial, for instance, because from partial, you kind of, you're, you're saying that I want a little bit more guarantee about the type of thing that I'm passing in. Um, but the point is that from partial, you can also like guarantee that it's not gonna um, pass in anything that isn't expected here. So you get a little bit of good type safety while getting rid of all of the as is and stuff like that. Um, result. Yeah, exactly. But it's actually like more complicated. Um, so sorry, I should read out the messages that I'm seeing. Helvanic do have the same issue. Most of my functions share the same signature. So I built a helper that catch the generics and provide with partial params. Yeah, exactly. So 
this is basically doing that. It's a little bit more complex than you might expect. Uh, what we're doing here is we create a mock, which is like partial deep no infer T. Uh, yeah, this, uh, it's kind of interesting. We've got this from any down here. And there's also a from exact as well. So if you really want to pass in the exact thing, from exact basically acts like an identity function where, oh, I need to import it, don't I? And then I, okay, not happy with that for some reason. From exact, and then you get, yeah, you've got to pass in the exact stuff there. Where do you get the fake data that is expected from within user? This is the point, is that sometimes you actually don't want to pass the enormous amount of fake data. This isn't producing any new data. It's just making the data that you're passing more acceptable on the type level. Because this is exactly the same, if I do from partial here, this is exactly the same as doing, um, if I remove that and then say as user, right? We're doing exactly the same thing. We're just making it more palatable and a bit more user friendly. So this, is exactly the same as this. Um, yeah, it looks at the expected uh, type of the parameter and satisfy that type instead of the expected thing that you're passing in, which is, it's a bit of wizardry because it's reversing what TypeScript usually does in that position. So from partial, yeah, there's one more thing as well, which is you can create a kind of like, uh, yeah, but I mean, a casting is a disaster if the function is expecting a value and you don't pass it. Yeah, I mean, but a lot of the time, let's say you're creating like a request, you know, you say const, and let me uh, demonstrate this. You say const request and you say, uh, I'm gonna create a base type here. And this is gonna be the request type that we get from node. And it turns out that you really just want to like set a couple of things on here. You don't wanna set array buffer. You don't wanna set blob body cache because the only thing your function is actually going to use is the, where is it? Body. Yeah, it's the body, right? And so you just set the body to be, I don't know, something. Hang on, why is it yelling at me here? Missing the following properties. Why does sets? Oh, yeah, it needs to be a deep partial. Partial deep, yeah. So body now needs to be a, uh, a something inside here, right? So what this lets you do is, like, so often in TypeScript, is you need to pass in, or so often in TypeScript tests, you need to pass in less than the function actually expects on the type level. Uh, yes, it's on GitHub. So it's on GitHub under, if you just look at uh, Matt Pocock test utils. This is where we're putting it now. I'll probably move it under the total TypeScript banner soon. There you go, a few of you found it. Uh, let me put it in the uh, description. Is this the one? Yes, is this the one? I think I'm live on this one. Yeah. There you go. So you should see it in the in the thing below. Assumes the implementation though. Yeah, you don't need to mock everything. Basically, is is what's going on. Yep, yep, yep. Cabio gets the right idea. Johannes, I'm not under. I don't understand what you mean by assumes the implementation. Uh, basically, I've I would have found this super useful uh, a bunch of different times, and I'm sad it doesn't exist. And so I'm creating. I don't. Uh, so this sort of request here, this create base thing, what it does is it creates and. And this is, this is the thing, I'm not happy with most of the names of this. I'm not even really happy with the name of the package itself. It's just like test utils, boring. So maybe this could be like mock utils or something. I haven't put this on NPM yet, uh, but it is mostly set up for that. So a bit of the stream is gonna be me like running through the stuff I did on the speed run and just setting up change sets, setting up CI, because I wanna push this today. Hmm. So create base. What's the right name for this? Like. Because what's going on here is like funk here. I can say like, uh, like we've got a base user here and the base user can have an ID, uh, can have a name and it can have reports um, or it can have none of that. And then we can just pass in base user um, from, from exact is cool here because we actually get forced to pass in the reports here. Yeah, Richard, I mean, that's uh, a bit confused. Not sure I see the use case for it in a test to invoke a function with invalid types. 
I mean, if you're testing a library, uh, you want to, and someone's not using JavaScript or someone's not using TypeScript, they're not going to get type errors if they pass the wrong thing in. Tons of it. Um, so. If you test something more complicated than a very basic function, you might not actually know as a consumer which data is required. Anyway, yeah. So I'm not going to argue whether this library should exist or not, because I definitely feel the need for it. Uh, what I would like to talk about is the names of stuff, though. So like, I don't think create base is the right idea, really. Create base mock object. Create partial. I don't know, because it's not really creating a partial. Uh, and I didn't want to call it something really generic, like or mock type, like create mock type. Mm. <laughs> Honey, wake up. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Create base. I'm quite happy with the names of these functions, like from any, from partial, from exact. They feel pretty good. Um. Yeah, good point. Um, that's a really good shout, Colin. Whether I need base uh, present here. I'm not sure if I do, because base here... It's weird, because I'm... Do I need something for the, like the default to like hook on? I don't think I do. What I was thinking with underscore base was... Yeah, because I, I sort of want it as like a private interface here. In substitute. Test case builder... Yeah, there are caveats. There are caveats. Like, I don't know. This when I ask people like what their yeah, I mean this this does seem to work, Colin. When I asked people what their pain points were with testing in TypeScript, everyone said like, I want this to be fixed somehow. Create scaffold. Uh, Colin, you were right. I can remove that, and that's actually much nicer. Let me check my tests are passing. Uh, I've got some tests running here. Yep, everything's passing. That's real good. Thanks for that. Um, <sighs> mock some. We'll come back to this, I guess. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Johannes. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, TypeScript is not not pretty from the library side. It really isn't. There's some funky syntax. I feel like we're like still early on in TypeScript's iteration in terms of what it wants to be. It f feels like it's just sort of doing the bare minimum in terms of the library side to give you the abilities to do certain things. But especially like conditional types. And, um... Well, um, yeah. Uh, Colin, we've had this discussion before. We've had this discussion. You keep bringing it up too. It's cruel to me. Because I can't keep saying you're wrong because it's mean. Oh, new ranch, thank you. Create base. All about that base, about that base, no trouble. I'm all about that base. Do I need this? Yeah, I do need it. <laughs> yes, it's got tests. Got a whole load of test suites. Tests. Do you say test suites or tests suite? I don't know. But yeah, this is uh, this is the test suite. Yeah. Oh, God. Please don't say we'll forever have this discussion. Forever until I... Until I mute you. Uh, okay, okay, okay. You guys are still chatting about whether the, the library should exist. That's fine. Well, no one's uh, suggested anything better than create base. So uh, I'm going to add some JSDoc annotations here because these will form the core of the library, a blueprint. It's interesting because this is. Whatever we name this becomes like a concept in the library that we're creating. What is a base? You think of like TRPC has procedures. You think of Zod actually does this really well because it only has like, uh, you have z.object, z.string, things that already exist in TypeScript. 
TypeScript. Oh, for real? Justin Cypress already called this create base function, call it mock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, that might mean this is actually more painful to use create base because then it's going to conflict with auto imports. Mm. From. We are creating a library that's going to fix um, some annoying problems in TypeScript with testing. Zodmock looks really cool. Looks really cool, actually. And I've I think that if I were using Zodmock, let's actually just look at it. Yeah, Zodmock looks sick. Because you basically get to say, okay, I create this big old schema with stuff here, and I just get to mock it with Zod. Generate mock from a schema. It's a perfect, perfect use for Zod. Default base. Buttery biscuit base. I've got the hair for that. Man, that was my favorite video for a long time. Zod mock, man, has so few downloads. What? That's crazy. From exact and from partial, basically, um, what it does is um, from exact. In fact, let me uh, start writing some notes down in a readme, because then I can answer your questions as I go. Uh, what we're we going to call this? Um, placeholder. Can't think of a name for the repo yet, even. Is so good. Zodmock is awesome. Um, from partial. Partial. Ah. No, out. Let's you create a deep partial of an object to a slot expecting that object. Create mock. Hey, Loretta. No, create mock, I don't know, I don't know. Um, so we got from partial, um, create base currently. Ah, gray storm, man. Um, from exact, and then from any. I guess these guys should live uh, under here. And for those who just joined, what we're doing is mock utils. Oh, I need to think of a name. Name incoming. Mm. Create mock. I think create mock is better than create base. Because what what do we want to call the thing that we're creating? Because create base. Because the way it works is if we look at some of the tests, we basically create a type user and then this what do we want to call this? Like that's I guess the question. Is should this be like a user mock? Should it be a user base? Should it be a user mock type? All your base are belong to us. Po mock. Excellent. Yeah. Sick to create a library that generates objects from Zod. It's so... Yeah, I've never used it. I've never used it. TS mocking utils. Po mock. <laughs> I can't call it Po mock. This isn't like a tan stack. I can, like... Tanstack, I think, is a great name, by the way. Create Pocock Mock. Nah, I don't know. Matt Pomock. Uh, Lucas, what was your previous message? Oh, I can't see. Um, okay, I'll go with Create Mock for now. Bow, bow, bow. I've got a strange song in my head from somewhere. So create base. 
create mock. I need to rename some files as well. So create mock at index. Uh, yes, I, I do want to update the imports actually. And now create mock.test.ts. So we get to do that. Now, okay, then I've got to update the readme too. Create mock. Okay, so that's fine. Can't smart it, bow mock. Just mock like symbol. Mm, nah, mocked. Bow mock. <laughs> you guys are just going for bow mock. I can't do that. Poe partial, Poe exact. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Nah. Where is the accent coming from? Well, it's coming from my... Um, start mocking. No, start mocking sounds like we're just... Uh, we're starting a process, but... Oh, no, my Scottish is all over the place. Process? P mock. <laughs> All right, fine. Po mock for now. <sighs> Create po mock. <laughs> <laughs> Just looks really funny to me. It's really funny to me. Ah. <sighs> Oh no, I can't do it. Mock utils. Call it a fake. Create fake. Create mock is better. Create mock is the best bad bunch. Um, pass types. Mock utils solves the as problem in TypeScript tests. Bake fake. <laughs> bake fake. Just baking it up, man. Let him bake. Ooh, stub. Oh, you're a delight to my chat. Thank you. Yeah, to do, change the name of this function. Solves the as problem in TypeScript tests. So let me just show the problem that I'm describing here. So we got like it. Um, oh, thank you, Samrat. That's great. I'm good, thanks, Raphael. How are you doing? <laughs> core entity mock. There's like core and entity and mock in there. Mock monk. It is 10, it's 90 percent picking names, man. It really is. Like when I worked on X State, 90% of it was picking the names of stuff. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Oh, I'm a lower case for even. I oscillate, actually. I do oscillate. I go back and forth. Can I do like a. I wonder if it'll actually still pick up if I do. Read. Read me. I really like that. That's very sarcastic. I'm going to see if it actually picks that up. Just working? Yeah, me too. Trying to. Pofo. That is good. That is good. Pofo. Good lord, that's good. Uh, 
I'm just doing some so const get user id equals a function that takes in a type of user id string oh no we've already got one you already got one so we've got get user id user user uh, and this error is going to be i'll just remove reports from it because i don't need that currently and then i'm just going to capture this property name is missing that there i'm just getting something for the readme just so i can explain the problem i'm trying to solve uh, missing in type this. Okay, cool. Yeah, surprise stream, surprise stream. I'm just, this is a chill stream. I'm, I'm, I'm no chaotic energy today. Does it work, Sina? <laughs> Does it work? That's quality. Actually, I'm going to do it like this. Um, I only care about user.id for this test. We need to pass in the whole user object. No, no 90 minutes. I'm not gonna like delete this repo because I actually think it's valuable. I mean, I thought the last one was valuable. Replica, I don't think is right. I don't want to like be conceptually heavy here. I think everyone understands what a mock is. I guess fixture is the word that we haven't used yet. Maybe fixture is actually better than mock because mock indicates that you're mocking the behavior of something. Fixture is just some dummy data. Hmm. Yeah, I got some. Yeah, I felt the pain from last time. That was rough having to do a funeral pyre over the last repo. I did enjoy it though. That was fun. Pofo. What was it? Pofo. Pofo. Stub. Stub indicates that we're stubbing out an endpoint or something. That's how it reads to me. Doesn't feel to me like a fixture. Fixture I, I kind of like actually. We're debating what we should call this function create mock. I'll write the docs for it in a minute. Um, Instead, we can have some problems. Oh, was it? With scaffold. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, does Cypress have a create fixture function? Fixture is decent. Yeah, stub implies behavior. I don't want it to imply behavior. I'm not trying to mock classes or anything here. Phony here. I know I'm sort of trying not to sweat it, but I, I also, that's kind of the reason I started this stream because I wanted some advice on what to name it. So, because I feel like I've got the behavior pretty much down. Um, I, I need to publish it. So we're going to do like a sort of a short speed run where I try and publish it as fast as possible, I guess. Using as feels unergonomic. Actually, maybe as per minute. Yeah, why, why does as feel wrong here? That's what I'm trying to express. Why does as in this situation feel bad? Because it does feel bad. And that's the problem I'm trying to solve. Type mockery, TS mockery, I think is already a thing. I looked it up earlier. It doesn't quite do what I want it to do, but it's fine. The, the issue, um, 
software naming needs to use more plain English or stick to standards. We have enough jargon already. The issue is, is that if you have a good bit of jargon, it can go a long way. Colin, that's interesting because it's like pre-setup data. As always feels bad, yeah. Yeah. Feels bad. We're trained, in general, trained not to use it. Doesn't indicate. Yeah, I'm sort of, I guess I should do like type user ID string string. As type, why does as feel bad? Why does as feel bad? <sighs> Pofo or Pomoc, I'm not gonna use my own name in it. I'm not, I want it to be boring. TS reset, boring, super successful. Got like 4K, 4K sounds. What keyboard do I use? I'm using like a real basic 30 quid Mac one. It's not, not anything fancy. Oodles. Yeah, oodles is a word. Oodles of other properties. <laughs> As just feels bad. It doesn't indicate intent. It feels like a hack. <laughs> Boring mock. Lying is bad. But I mean, let's let's real talk for a second. Should a library exist just because you don't like using a piece of TypeScript syntax? Or should you just use as and just not have the dependency? Yeah, I'm, I'm swaying towards fixture. Yeah, we are tricking the compiler. We are tricking the compiler. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> This is what the library is designed to do too. So what the alternative that I'd be proposing is this, is to basically have um, basically use a function like this, partial ID one, two, three. I think part of the reason that as feels bad is that you need to actually manually specify the type here. So you actually need to dig out what type it needs to be. Whereas the thing about this partial function is you can actually just like pass it in and it just acts as it understands what type you need. Yeah, okay. That's, there's, there's an angle in there. It feels bad. You're trained not to use it. You need to manually type you expect. Uh, Colin, what did Colin say? Mm -hmm. From partial feels better than as because it feels more akin to satisfies. Yep. Something that throws on property access if it wasn't declared. Oh, like a proxy. Johannes, that's actually a pretty bloody good idea. Ooh, boy. Yeah, I mean, if you want to trick the compiler, I think it's good to be explicit about that. Yeah. But that's a real good idea, though. I've never used proxies before. I'd be kind of intrigued. The environment that Vitesse and Jest use, does it, like, use proxies? Are proxies allowed? I assume so. Uh, yeah, because it works with like Emma and stuff, and that uses proxies. That's pretty good. I've never used a proxy. Yeah, but I mean, I think the thing I hate about as is that you have to manually specify the type you want, whereas with this, it detects the type you want automatically and just lets you pass it. 
Yeah, what Johannes says sounds sick. Because <laughs> the thing is, okay, I know this needs to exist because loads of people come to me all the time and say, how do I solve this problem? Because it feels like a problem. Mm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Reset. Reset. Mm. No, I think from partial is fine because from partial we're basically saying um, you pass in a part. Oh yeah, it's not partial, it's from partial. And let's say we import total TypeScripts um, from partial. Um, what key tells? I'm not doing Focock or whatever. some first class primitives for fooling the compiler basically for There's a small difference between as user and as any. There's a small difference, but it's not that big. But yeah. Ooh. Faux mock. <laughs> Faux mock. Is there something to do with like as? Can we squeeze as into that pun somewhere? Like, I don't know. As disgust or something. Mm. Okay, so how would we implement that then? We would say, because uh, I'm I'm really keen to try out this proxy thing. <laughs> For providing incomplete data for safely providing incomplete data to tests. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've sort of like done the implementation, like I've scaffolded it all out, like we've got this sort of create mock thing. Uh, in general, I write the readme afterwards. I usually just test that everything works, write some sort of JS doc comments, which is what I've done here. This is the readme is in the comments um, below. Simulate, I don't know, safely passing stuff. Anyway, I want to do this, I want to do this proxy thing. So I have no idea how proxies work. So. Proxy JavaScript. Okay. Proxy object. So I'm just going to try and speed run learning this stuff. As you create a proxy for another object, we can use some, okay, funnel operations. That's cool. So proxy is just a new proxy target handler. What the hell is the handler? So handler is going to be get. So target prop receiver. Okay. So what does target do then? I'll get prompt receiver. Okay, okay, okay. So there's no, so annoyingly, there's no TypeScript stuff here. Um, let's just do some checks on this. So let's let's do a red green refactor thing. <laughs> As bogus. As bogus. Um, what's my background? I used to be a um, open source person, so I, I worked. Well, I guess I'm doing open source now. Um, 
I worked on XState. I was part of the XState core team. I was trying to make their um, TypeScript types better, and it just sort of led me down the dark path that I'm on today. Mm, so the idea is then, when you have a from partial, it should throw an error when the test itself accesses a property not defined on the input. Ooh, baby, I love your way every day. So we've got a const func is this, and the function expects a uh, input is going to be id string. Then we go return input dot id. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say from expect. I always forget about the throw stuff here. Hey, Jonathan. X state, X state's awesome, man. X state is so good. X state is so good. Uh, from partial, don't need to pass anything into this. Um, to throw. Let me check. Okay, so that's failing now. So we've got our red. Um, oh, no, no. From partial. So it needs to be funk here, doesn't it? Yeah. Funk from partial to throw. That's such a good idea. Oh, this is going to be so good. Well, uh, the wizard uses uh, some arcane tools. The wizard uses stuff that his students use, basically. So half the world uses this. So I'm going to VS Code. So I'm going to use it. OK. Hmm. From partial. So I need to create a proxy. Const proxy equals new proxy. But so I have an object here then. What the hell? Get a trap for getting a property value. I'm learning this stuff by the way alongside here. <laughs> That is how the wizard feels. So the target then is going to be the mock. So we have this mock then. Ooh. Oh, no, so it only works on objects, does it? I don't believe that then. How can it only work on objects? Can you not do proxy on a string? as any target any and what's the p then prop i see so this one here is basically creating a proxy on this target. And when message two is accessed, then it returns a different thing. And whatever you return is going to um, any handles you don't override it, we use the target to do the default implementation. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you could proxy things on a string. You could proxy to uppercase on a string, for instance. Any handles you don't. With proxy, uh, Colin, could you tell me, what do you mean by that? Any handles you don't override, it will use the target to do the default implementation. Oh, there's a cat outside. What's going on, buddy? Oh, good. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out the proxy API. Let me just try some stuff. Because targets p receiver. Uh, I'll just return. Can I just return targets? Yeah, just one of the handles. Okay. So, but like, what other handles do I need to focus on here? 
So because there's a bunch, right? Own keys. Oh, I see. When that's called on it, has get prototype of define property set. Which handles do I need to care about? Oh, okay, okay. Mock function calls with the apply handle. So the prop, is this only gonna work one level deep? Yes, I did, I did see that Twitter thing. People have done a type for cron scheduling. Completely nuts. Yeah, but is that gonna work? Is that, does if p in mock, can I do like if, if, so if p in mock, ah, oh, go away with this fricking as any crap. Oh, I guess, I guess I should do t extends this. That's gonna help a lot. Yeah, that is gonna help a lot. Hmm. Is that Ben Wilson? Is that the Ben Wilson that I know? Are you the real Ben Wilson? The true Ben Wilson. So if not this, throw error. Um, wait, what? Uh, symbol. Mm, okay, so I can do string in mocked object. Does that work? Oh, produce new proxies for nested stuff? Ben Wilson. If it's the Ben Wilson that I know, he's a legend. He's such a nice guy. I used to work with him. Man, welcome. Everyone say hello to Ben. Ben is like the nicest guy. He's such a lovely dude. We're trying to figure out something, Ben, which is we're trying to figure out how to use a proxy because we're trying to make a sort of mocking thing where we want to recursively... We basically want to fool TypeScript compiler without fooling our implementation. Some types you can use without importing them. Some types get registered in the global scope. Uh, there's a, a section in total TypeScript about this, actually. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. Love you too, dude. He's the nicest Ben. Um... Oh, 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 right, right. We're not actually returning our proxy. Ooh, here we go. Okay, dog. Because I think we're actually getting a, f uh, a proper test here now. Symbol dot iterator not found in. Eh? What? Excuse me. Hang on, hang on. What? What's going on here? D ben of data, what's Ben of data breaks? It's like Anne of Cleves. Oh God, I'm not having fun here. Get some log on that P. Okay, symbol, why is it being called with symbol, symbol, iterator? That's what I don't understand. Oh, it should return whatever you pass in. What? So utils.test.ts should return whatever you pass in. What? Yeah, using proxies. Uh, yeah, P in target, I guess. God, this P is just like... 
symbol iterator not found? Why is it why is it doing that? Okay, from partial. Huh? P is not used as a variable there. I'm just real confused about this. So target. Is target correct though? Because what's target in this case? What are we actually targeting? Target is an empty object. Target's foo bar. That's not what I wanted, right? Oh, I bet something's happening here in like two equal. Hmm. We could just ignore symbols. Can we ignore symbols? I don't know though. What? Really? Reflect or get target p receiver. Colin, I'm just trusting you. Don't put a bug into my computer. Symbol dot iterator still not found. Um. So. Console dot log. Type of p. It's a symbol. If type of p equals symbol. Uh, yeah, let's try this. I mean, I have no idea what I'm doing here, guys. Type of p not equal symbol and this. No type not found in that. What? What is two equal doing under the hood? Eh? Not arrow functions? Okay. Freaking reflect, man. I mean, I don't think reflect is causing us an issue here currently. It just feels like two equal is like, I'm checking the wrong thing. So, okay, let me let me explain for those who just come in what's going on here. We're trying to create a function called from partial. And what from partial is gonna do is we can pass it into a slot that's expecting like an object. Um, and we can just pass a partial object in its place. This is really useful for tests. What was suggested by someone in the chat that I thought was a genius idea is to use a proxy so that if the proxy is actually called with a member of the object that isn't kind of like, um, that isn't specified in the partial, then it's going to throw an error. I think that's so clever because it gives you runtime safety and type safety too, except I can't get it working because it looks like to equal itself. I'm really keen to actually look at the really keen to look at the actual implementation of two equal to check what the hell it's doing. No type not found in the object. Hmm. How are we going to get around that? If it's checking stuff that it's seeing if it exists or not, then this isn't going to work. This proxy stuff isn't going to work. Someone must have done this already, right? Like this doesn't feel like particularly novel ground. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely doing something weird. Let's let's go diving. Own keys. Okay. Hmm. Let me check if it happens with to be. To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Yeah, it does. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Because actually what... Maybe this test is wrong. Maybe this test is wrong because what it was checking was it was checking if result, the mock here, was foobar. Hmm. So I think this was slightly wrong here. But I think that might bite us in the future. Check what own keys does. What does this do? What's it expecting? Array like string or symbol. So I can return what object dot keys target. Ba -do -do -do, do -do -do -do, Z's in money. No. Still not quite clear to me what that's happening. Yeah, so that's got a foo on it. So can I, if I come on, click out of that. That seems fine. To equal foo bar, not working. So I have a colleague called Anderist, or ex-colleague called Anderist. Well, I imagine that'll work. So, because I imagine that, um, like result.foo, for a complicated reason, this isn't going to um, pass tests, but this will work. Um, Hmm. This feels funky because we're kind of introducing stuff into people's tests that are going to make them break for real weird reasons. Hmm. I'm not in love with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Colin, you're right. Own keys, target object dot keys. I've, I mean, I don't really know what I'm doing, but you seems like you're right. That makes sense. <sighs> Susan, good old fashioned googling. No type. Hmm. So what, uh, what was the thing it was failing? To equal. Yes, to equal proxy. <laughs> yeah, here we go. This is the... Ah, come on, really? <laughs> come on. This was the exact thing and it's stale. Maybe it's not wrong. Hmm. Hmm. Why would has the has trap work? What does has even do? Target. P. Mm -hmm. oh, reflect dot has. Yeah, now that just doesn't work. And it's a different error. I'm starting to think maybe you guys 
have no idea what you're doing because I don't have an idea what I'm doing. Thanks, Colin. See you soon, pal. Targets what defines the methods of my proxy. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? God. Oh. Are we suddenly on... Oh, okay. Hang on. Video might cut out for a second, but it looks okay now. I've been led down a dark alley by you guys. I'm not feeling very warm towards you, I've got to say. Because I was about to publish a lovely NPM library. It was just a couple of little type of sessions. And then, you know, things got messy. We started talking about proxies. I had to learn the proxy API, which I'm still learning. We're trying to build um, something that's going to allow you to pass a proxy to a test and only provide certain elements to that proxy. And then the rest of it is just going to basically It was working without a proxy. It was working without a proxy, man. Run while we get an assertion. <laughs> Johannes. I'm not gonna time myself on this one. What I might do is I might just put out an early version just to see what's going on. But you guys, I don't know, you're in my bad books because all this proxy nonsense has just screwed me a bit. Um, I'm tempted to still keep this test because I really like this idea and I might fiddle with it later. But for now, I'm just gonna uh, comment out all that code and let's just get something working, right? Um, utils.test.ts Oh crap, what's happened here? Ah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, hmm? Make a proxy a... Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, let me push. Push, sorry, my commit message history is rubbish. Yeah, it's it's up, it's up. So it's in the description below. Um, I've, I've put the code up, but it's just commented out, I think. Uh, I've got some other stuff I need to do. So I tell you what, what I'm gonna do, let's make a pact. I've got to go in like half an hour anyway. So I want to just do a little bit of kind of like CI stuff and messing about. I've got this nice log rocket pencil. Oh, I'm reverse, so you can't see me, but yeah. Um, oh, Jest is ignoring it. That's interesting. Well, Vtest is what I use. I think that's what the industry is moving to anyway. Um, so let me just move a couple of stuff because I want to do just like some CI stuff, get this all working. Yeah, this is my commit message discipline. What, what's get log push initial commit there you go we're, we're off to oh sorry you should be able to see that we've got push and we've got initial commits that's my commit message discipline uh, let me just check some stuff so I'm using turbo repo for this which means I get some cool stuff like I can just run pnpm turbo dev and oh no, test build lint and that's just going to test everything for me I'm going to skip the, maybe I shouldn't skip, maybe I should just comment it out. Comment out this failing test. Yep, now everything's working. Now I can start working on the CI. So I've got, um, made it work. Uh, let's have a little emoji in there. Uh, music. Yeah, boy. Okay. So I should do a GitHub action. Uh, where's my other thing that had a GitHub action in it? Was it package demo, I think? Yeah. So I'm just going to copy over the two GitHub workflows. Let's do the first one for now. Um, stick it in here. Oh, that's just main.yaml. It needs to belong in .github, then uh, workflows, 
then main.yaml. Uh, yes, I do. This is going to be the CI job, and it's going to run tur uh, pnpm turbo lint build test, I think. So let's see. Yo, yo, yo. Proxy plus generics. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my thinking. I think this is how I'll justify this library. Is it's got ooh, it's got cool proxy magic in it. Oh, very nice. Uh, fix TypeScript. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to maintain anything like that. I want to maintain small little libraries, little helper libraries. Okay, so my CI up here. Um, hands up. Who knows? Who can read this stuff on the left here? I can read bits of it, but I can't read all of it. Um, basically what it's doing is it's like checking out the repo, setting up PNPM, which is the thing we're using, setting up node with a PNPM cache, then installing it, then running the stuff that we want to run basically. And what I'll do is I'll commit this, uh, CI added. There you go. That's a sensible one, isn't it? Now, when I go up to the, to the repo, then it should just work like clockwork, map per cock test utils. I'm not calling this faux cock or anything like that. I mean, that's pretty ugly, isn't it? So actions, got CI added. This should be running now. Starting the job. Uh, got a bunch of stuff running. Okay, set up the action, set up node, installing from PNPM so fast. And now it installs all this stuff. And yeah, CI is running very, very quickly. So our entire CI run took maybe 15 seconds or something, that's just badass. Um, TS reset ran into a problem. Mm, TS reset is fine, I think. Did I mess anything up here? No, it's just the wrong repo. Okay, okay. Close that one down. Go on, we Okay. So in that case, I need to add change sets as well. So I'll just add npm add the change sets or change sets CLI. By the way, you guys can ask me questions as, as I'm doing this, but I've just done a like a speed run through all this stuff. Namespace. No, I do. I, what is the GitHub Actions extension? Ooh. GitHub Actions for VS Code. Well, that's quite nice. Ooh. So you get autocomplete there? Damn, that's real nice. Ooh. Ooh. God, that is lovely. I would definitely use that if I was setting out from scratch, which I'm sort of not because I'm just going to copy over from package demo. Uh, so now I've got the published one. Let me stick that inside main.yaml or on a different one, publish.yaml. This is going to be the one where we actually publish it live. So this is going to be with publish pnpm run release. Let's go package.json, add a release script. This is going to run turbo build lint test and change set. Crap, is it release or publish? I think it's publish. I need to double check that. I'm getting massive deja vu. Reference. What? What's the reference for this? Command line options, yeah. Publish, okay, good. Okay, publish, build lint test. I've got all my stuff set up for npm ignore and stuff. Total TypeScript under the global namespace. What are you talking about? Uh, I'm just, I'm gonna call this mock utils, I think, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't think of a more creative name. Mock utils is what we're going with. I need to go pnpm change set in it uh, pmpm change set oh yeah and I forgot to do this last time config.json access public change set add a change set 
uh, patch first version. Yeah, I, I forgot that last time. It's so rare I actually need to set it up. Um, mock utils. Okay, I need to do one more thing, which is on my repo itself. I just want to check, see if anyone's... No, no one's made any pull requests. That's good. Um, I call this test utils. I should call it mock utils, really. Next, I need to... On branches... Um, what's this thing I want to do? Is it on actions? Uh, I want read and write permissions, and I want GitHub Actions to be able to create pull requests. I need to add an npm token. So, oh, I recently found out about my content. Thank you. There's lots of it now. Been doing about it for a year, I think. Yeah, like it's pretty much a year today. My total TypeScript course is out too. Like it's, we released it this week. So on like two days ago, it's now out, out, out. So you can go buy it. It's really good. What am I doing? NPM token. Sorry, I'm doing some stuff that you're not allowed to see because I'm adding an access token. Let me just add this. I need to generate a new token. I need a granular access token. I need to authenticate dummy toolkits. Nah, you're trying to mock me with my own mocked package. Oh, good, the tree surgeon can come. Um, eight. Shouldn't actually say that out loud. Thankfully, it's a one-time password, so you guys can't... Yeah, happy anniversary. I'm the coolest guy. Yeah, uh, it's... My video process is really weird. Really, really weird. It's basically just me just blasting stuff out, so I improvise pretty much everything. And then uh, I sort of take take all of that stuff, which is usually about 25 minutes of footage, and just like stack, like clamp it right down until it's... Um, about five minutes and a lot of that is automated so I have a script that takes my latest output from OBS which is what I use and puts it into DaVinci Resolve I've got this really cool little speed editor just here where I sort of speed edit through and it automatically like cuts out all the silence it's it's a badass process and it means that I can take about an hour and a half and I can get a five minute video which is like hour and a half completely beginning to end planning recording editing uploading Figma uh, thumbnail uh, a five-minute video up to YouTube really quickly, which is great. That's that's what you want. GitHub. Um, what am I doing? What was the name of the thing? Mock Utils. Token. Sorry, you guys can't see what I'm doing, but that's deliberate. Read and write. Permissions, read and write. Total time script. Cool. Generate this token. Secrets, actions. Cool. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing. So I just added an NPM token right here. Uh, DaVinci Resolve, it's like it's it's professional grade uh, and it's free. And it's extraordinary for what you get for being free. I bought the paid version uh, just because I knew I was going to use it a lot. Mocklet Sauce. Mocklet Sauce. You remember Boiler Suit, Ben? Boiler Suit is the best package name ever. Uh, what am I doing? I really miss those days at the Virtual Forge, Ben. I really do, weirdly. It was a strange place to work, but it was it was it was a lot of fun working there. Um, so yeah, like the total TypeScript stuff, it's now totally live. It's now ready. Yep, DaVinci Resolve. So I think I should be able to send this live now. I've got myself my first change set. That's good. I can now just say... Um, we'll do it live. Send it up. Pomoc. Pomoc. 
can't call it Pomark, can I? 40 notifications, God. Twitter really gets completely unmanageable when you get above 20,000 followers. I'm some way up from that now. Oh, thanks, Sina. Matthew Bancock. Yeah, this looks like an MIT. I'll just check children, soul, bathtub. No, it looks legit. Uh, merge. There's another one too. Ah, version packages. Yeah, so this is the system now that we've got set up, which is it's going to basically, this PR, if we merge it, we'll send it up live to NPM. Ship it? Yeah. What are you saying ship to? Ship Pomark. Mootils. Mootils? I don't really get that. I'm not a cow, am I? I feel like a cow. Um, we didn't really get where we wanted to. But I mean, we're, we're in a good spot now. I can now send this live. So are we ready to send it live? I guess we need like a, we need a couple of things. We need to, <laughs> you didn't, did you? You didn't put it as Matthew Pomock. If you did, I mean, license. Does it work if we do live? I think it does. That's hilarious, man. I might have to tweet that. That's just a bit too good to stay secret. Um, where are we? Mock utils. Yeah, let's do that. No. There you go. This is my life now, just tweeting random stuff like this. Used to, everyone's still for Pomoc. I'm, I can't do it. I can't do Pomoc. You missed the change set setup. It was pretty quick, actually. Um, yeah, you know, this is going to be, this VOD is going to be recorded you'll be able to go back i've got like i've done this like three times now on different videos so you'll be able to see it where to start if i want to start making packages just start get going uh look at some of my videos especially the previous one the 90 minute speed run that's just like a extremely quick chaotic um blast through making a package from scratch um getting good at it i mean that depends on the problem that you're solving you know uh no, I haven't used somatic release. I I use change sets because uh, my old colleague Anderist used it, and it's great. Um, I'm sure semantic release is pretty good because I've heard lots of people talking about it too. Vtest checks if ob object implements the symbol dot iterator property. I think that's what's breaking. Huh. Because I bet a proxy does that too. Mm. Yeah, Shafai, the um, you can always just go back, right? And just see what's going on. Do people like this tweet? Wait, where's where's the tweet I just made? Got to check, got to check, got to check. Yes, people like it. Good. Hmm. So I guess we've got to do the readme. To do. Let me just put API here for now. Create mock. Are we going to go with create mock? I'll just put create fixture. Uh, yeah, let's just go mad here and just go create fixture. Replace all, uh, create mock, remove this, make it create fixture. 
and create fixture. Why are you now complaining? Okay, you're fine. Just run the CI. Everything's happy, good. Change to change to create fixture. Oh, it's deprecated now? Interesting. No, I'm sort of trying to create a if you look on my Twitter, you'll sort of see what I'm aiming at. It's kind of a method for basically stopping the need for using as in TypeScript. Um, okay, I've, I need to bounce soon. And I need to... I need to send this live, I think. Yeah, let's just send this live. That's a cool way to end the stream. Let's go. I imagine it's not going to work. I imagine I'll have forgotten something on my key or something, but let's just watch the PR go live. So we've got our published one. Let's go, 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 go. No, not creating a standard testing library, just basically solving the as problem in uh, TypeScript. Vite versus Turbo? Oh, Turbo Pack, you mean? Yeah, which one? Vite versus Turbo Pack. Oh no! Ah, I know, I know what happened. Of course, it didn't work first time. Of course, it didn't work first time, Governor. Of course not, because I wasn't actually specifying npm token. So it thought it wasn't logged in, but it actually was. Log in, Governor. Turbo Pack. So. Turbo Pack's just not ready yet. I've got a weird, unique uh, insight into Turbo Pack because I was part of the team that shipped it. Uh, I, I wrote the documentation initially for Turbo Pack uh, when I worked at Vercel. Turbo Pack's extremely exciting. Um, extremely exciting. And I think at some point Vite will use Turbo Pack. That's my prediction. Don't really have any special insight on that other than I think there are some conversations in that vein because Turbo Pack is, is the same level as Webpack and it's an extremely cool technology when you look at the innards of it. We can have a look actually while we're waiting for this. Well, this should build pretty well already. Um, I'm not sure about that, Tim. I'm not sure what the rules are there. Yeah, here we go. We pushed it and it worked. So create pull request or publish. And we have yet received 404 and it published it and we should have it on NPM. NPM. Yeah. Oh, no. What you tells? Yeah. We got it. Let me check that. All the bits are in there. Oh, it's shipping GitHub in there. <laughs> shipping our readme. <laughs> I love how this works. Oh, did I do a what is Turbo? Oh, yes, I did do a what is Turbo Pack video. Pretty sure I did. That was one of the last things I did before uh, bouncing. Uh, let me just fix some npm ignore stuff. So I don't want GitHub to be put up there. I don't want the change log on there. Or maybe I do want the change log. I think that's fine. License, yes. Readme, yes. Turbo.json, no. Cool. This will... Um... Yeah, stream's going to be uploaded. This is YouTube, man. Like, every stream on YouTube just gets zonked onto YouTube. Fixed. NPM ignore. Nice. Um, yeah, let me just show you some cool stuff to do with turbo.build. So I wrote the, or helped write, because um, probably this stuff is like mostly uh, gone on quite a way since I last touched it. Um, I helped to write these pages, uh, bundling versus native ESM. I made these um, drawings as well. This is so cool. This is, oh man. So the idea of the turbo engine is the thing that drives TurboPack. TurboPack is a bundler. It works like Webpack. 
And what it does is it basically says, I'm going to uh, bundle your app for you. I'm going to take in a bunch of files, a bunch of TypeScript files, let's say. I'm going to turn them into JavaScript. It's going to use SWC for that behind the scenes. And what it's going to do is it's first going to, if I can zoom this in a bit, yeah, perfect. I'm first going to read the file. Let's imagine that these are like individual operations that it's going to do. It's going to read the file, then bundle the file, then concatenate two files together, then we end up with the full bundle at the end. Well, what it will do is it will cache the results of every single function in there. So it will cache the results of read file on API.ts, cache the results of bundle API contents, cache the results of concat, cache the results of full bundle. And also it will schedule these so that it can parallelize them for maximum um, parallelization. So it parallelizes it automatically across all eight, however many cores you've got on your CPU. So it's doing um, as much work at the same time as possible. Then the second time it runs, let's imagine that only SDK.ts changes. Then what's going to happen is that SDK.ts is going to change. That's going to be a file system event that comes in. It's going to trigger that read file thing to happen again and bundle to happen again. But because API.ts hasn't changed, then it's going to stay the same. It's just going to read from that cache. And if you imagine, there's actually, there's not just going to be two files in your entire project, there might be thousands. What that means is that this is potentially the fastest warm start from a cache of anything. And what it will do in the future, it's not going to do it right now, is it will be able to persist that cache. It's going to remember that API.ts has been read, remember that it's been bundled. And all of these tiny incremental operations are going to go into this cache that's going to sit on your file system. And the more granular your cache, the faster or the more you can cache. Because you know, you can cache like the results of various bundles and stuff. You can cache like the results of like say a hundred functions running. But when you then run your program again, you then need to run those a hundred functions again. With this, you're running you're caching at the function level. It's extraordinary. It's so good. Um but it's not ready yet. And it will be ready. They're shipping fast and it's it's an extraordinary team i was lucky enough to meet a bunch of them and work with a lot of them too and they really are just incredible okay looked at the source of vtest jest and what i found was messing things up it's accessing these properties for some reason node type node name is equal node asymmetric match return undefined for those you're good so what you're saying is inside our proxy if we go back to this i've got another call in 15 minutes so we will end things end it soon. I can inside utils. Am I still running this? No. Let's say pnpm run dev. And I'm going to inside here. Let's say const protected keys equals. Right, no one checks. I need to read what Raphael said. No type. Node name. is equal node asymmetric match. Hopefully I've spelled those right. Mock as this. Yep. Then if protected keys why is that not working? Plate keys includes um, P. Uh huh. Probably need to move that down. Yeah, that works. Okie dokie. Let's fix the test. Create fixture.test. No, it wasn't this one. It was utils.test. Yeah. Let's re enable the test. Expected function to throw an error. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. Huh? 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 What? Hmm, don't get that. 
Oh, oh, oh. I'm returning mock. Return the actual proxy. And it works. It works. Ooh. ooh, 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 ooh. I'm surprised Turbo is the first one to do the caching thing. It seems quite obvious. I think the best ideas are obvious. I think the thing about caching at this level is that you need to make sure the cache operation itself is extremely fast and you need to make sure it's very ergonomic. And even or in that if? I don't understand what you mean. Looks good to me. It's good to me. Uh, don't worry, Raphael. I think I'll just I'll just take this as it is. This is real good. So this proxy then <sighs> Hey, free of meetings. Nice. I'm not free of meetings. I need to go in like ten minutes. This is sick though. So let me just make a PR. Map PR uh, stage all changes title is add proxy behavior to to from partial. Uh, yes, it's a draft. No loom link. Don't use loom anymore. Isn't that cool? I've got a, CA, a CLI that I just call Matt for doing various things, and it makes a PR and stuff. Working proxy. Hey, my boy, my boy, my boy. Yes. Oh, he did a set. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, is equal node, asymmetric match. I think that's fine. No, not recursive yet. Yeah, let, let's add a failing test for the recursion and then I'll go to my meeting. Um, oh, I can smell my, my, my wife is cooking something. It smells really good. Oh, I think she said she was gonna cook lasagna. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, so it should throw an error when the test itself. A deeply nested property, not a sign of this. So we go input is like foo, which is an object which has an ID on it. Um, foo dot ID, and then from partial we're expecting it to throw, but we're expecting it to throw for a specific reason, right? So throw to throw error. Let's just see what, what it's throwing now with an inline snapshot. Foo not found in mocked object. Oh yeah, because the thing we do want to do is we want to pass in foo there, but we want this to be recursive. Snapshot function didn't throw it, cool. So we want this now to throw and we don't really mind what the error is. That's perfect. That's good, 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 good. Should throw it on the Yes, 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 yes. Awesome. I do, yeah, I just, I wrapped the GitHub CLI basically with my own prompts uh, so that I could add some custom stuff to it. Yeah, yeah, Matt's, Matt's up there. Matt's, uh, it's in Matt Pocock, Matt CLI, I think. Most of what I do is open source. Matt CLI, I think. I mean, don't expect me to document this or do anything weird, but it's just right, right there. Um... It's pretty useful. There's some stuff, good stuff in there. Right, I need to go. I've got a call in a minute about something. And it smells good from downstairs. Following my videos for a while now. Thanks for the helpful TS bits. Ah, oh, thank you. It's like It doesn't look like this color in real life. I've got this cool sort of setup where I've got like a, it's called a LUT which basically like adds an effect onto this. So let me say it's, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty similar, but can I like, yeah, I can just sort of decrease the LUT and you're going to see things get a lot more washed out. There you go. You see that? How cool is that? The magic of color correction. Look how pasty and horrible I look. And then suddenly, oh, and everything gets a lot cleaner. So cool. Man, camera stuff is really nice. Pomok is not happening. Don't PR Pomok. Do not PR Pomok. We might stream about this again, um, depending on how we get on. Uh, I've got to go. Lovely to see you, folks. Uh, and please, also, 
my Turtle TypeScript course is out for another week. And, or rather, not out for another week, it's out now forever, but it's on sale, I think, I can't remember, is it like for another week or something? I haven't actually checked how long it's out for. Uh, let me check. Uh, Pro Workshops, oh yeah, I need to check in like incognito mode. Yeah, here we go, here's all the Pro Workshops. How long are we out for? Yeah, seven days, damn. So you can save 20%, it's expensive. Total TypeScript is expensive. I made it to be expensive, I made it to be like it's it's for senior devs it's for devs who want to level up for mid-level devs for basically anyone who knows the basics of typescript and you can actually learn the basics of typescript from beginners typescript up here this is the course that's going to just transform your career uh i'm so excited to have it out it's the course i wish i had oh they put some testimonials up as well oh so nice all right i've got to bounce see you all bye